ओके लास्ट टाइम वी हैड अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द बेसिक ले आउट ऑफ एन एयरबस ए थ्री ट्वेंटी एयर कंडीशनिंग सिस्टम आई टोल यू दट डे दैट विल बी गोइंग थ्रू ईच एंड एवरी कॉम्पोनेंट इन द सिस्टम सो टू स्टार्ट ऑफ विद दैट टूडे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पैक सो इफ यू कैन रिमेंबर after the air flow passes through the flow control valve the air will go through the pack so it is mentioned as pack uh, okay even though it is mentioned as pack it has several components integrated into it so for entire assembly is known as the pack why we call it pack is that so if you go through the aircraft maintenance manual you can remove all these components together as a single unit that's why it's called a pack pack means that you have multiple components attached to each other so they call it pack so if you want you can remove one by one or you can remove the entire assembly as well okay to the lesson so before understanding the functions of the components and sensors in the system so i just want to make sure that you understand the air flow path through each and every component in the pack first of all we'll go through the diagram and we'll identify the components in the system okay to start off with now you if you can see the cursor so if you can follow along you will be able to track the flow first so we need air to operate the system so air comes from here now here it says from the bleed system so from the bleed system last time i told you there can be three sources mainly those are it can be from engines it can be from apu or it can be from hp ground cart so any of any one of these three sources can supply bleed air to the system for pack operation okay that air comes from this side that is why it is called from bleed system so first it passes through a ozone converter ozone converter is nothing but a catalytic converter which removes the ozone from the uh, normal air flow and last time i told you that here there is a flow control valve but if you have a closer look now here it says fcu which stands for flow control unit so why you call it flow control unit again like the pack this particular unit has several component integrators into it that's why it's called a unit so it has you can see here it has a motor so m stand for motor this is a torque motor and it has here you can see that there are two ss ss stand for solenoids so it has two solenoids then it has another sensor here this is a position sensor which operates using the principle of hall effect okay and here you can see two bellows like items so these are pressure sensors so flow control unit has one torque motor two solenoids one position sensor and two pressure sensors that's why it's called flow control unit and we missed another thing importantly it has the flow control valve integrated into it so we have so in the fcu we have one torque motor two solenoids one position sensor two pressure sensors and the flow control valve so this entire assembly is known as the flow control unit so i told you that this is a torque motor and here i said that there are two solenoids what are these two solenoids one is a on off solenoid the other one is for the 
normal operation and pneumatic backup operation we'll discuss this later then i told you that uh, it has a uh, position sensor basically this is the sensor which is used to detect the valve position and uh, give the indicate it to the uh, air condition system control computer the, the cockpit itself and here there are two pressure sensors one is a differential pressure sensor so here number two is the here it says delta pressure sensor and this is the that delta pressure sensor so you can see that it sends difference uh, 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 pressure difference so it senses pressure here it senses pressure here and it gets the difference and it can the sensor converts the pressure signal into an electrical signal and transmit it to the uh, related side computer and uh, here you have another sensor this is the pack inlet pressure sensor so he is the one who detects the pressure of the incoming air flow into the pack so the pressure of the bleed air which is coming into the pack is detected by this pressure sensor and uh, just a quick note here you can see that there are two computers here it says ACSC1 and this is ultimately the ACSC2 so ACSC1 is the one who will control the pack components when it comes to air conditioning pack 1 so air conditioning pack there are two air conditioning packs in the A320 I told you last time and number one pack is mainly controlled by air conditioning system controller one number two pack is controlled by air conditioning system control computer two so all the sensors in the pack one gives its feedbacks to air conditioning system controller one all the sensors in the air conditioning pack two gives its feedbacks into air conditioning system control computer 2 so the components which require operation in the pack 1 receives its signal by air conditioning system control computer 1 and the component which re components which require signals for operation of pack 2 or in the other words the components in the pack 2 receives its signals by air conditioning system control computer 2 so ACSC 1 will control and sense the feedback signals and the sensor signals of pack 1 air conditioning system control computer 2 is responsible for those signals in when it comes to pack 2 okay so we came up to here and here you can see that it gets divided into the air gets divided into two lines so one part it says trim air and here it is not mentioned so the air gets after the flow control valve air gets divided to two parts trim air and normal air so this air is used for hot air part so we'll discuss about this in a separate lesson so for the time being just forget about this trim air part will discuss this normal main supply part and why it is colored in red obviously because the bleed air from the system is hot that's why it's uh, colored in red and if you go further down the diagram and you will see here it's some sort of orange color so that means the temperature is reduced to a certain uh, amount and here it is you know it has certain shades of blue that is based on the uh, 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 temperature of the uh, air flows through those components uh, so that's why they are they have used several color codes in this uh, diagram okay now what happens after air flow goes through the flow control valves first it came from the bleed system went through the ozone filter or the converter then through the flow control unit why we call flow control unit because it has several components integrated into it after that they are divided into two now we are not going to talk about trim air system we are going to talk about the main supply system okay now we are here so after passing through the flow control valve the main supply comes here comes here 
if you fo follow the cursor comes here comes here and it goes to this part what is this part so basically this is a heat exchanger this is an air to air heat exchanger so it is even though it's not mentioned here we call this part you can see that here it's a, a square sort of a thing this is known as the primary heat exchanger okay now what is the heat exchanger so we'll try to understand it through the diagram so you can see that now the hot air is going through the pipes which is going through this particular box okay which is known as the heat exchanger so it's basically like a radiator the difference is in the radiator you have fluid going through the tubes here air goes through the tube so what happens is the hot air comes here and goes through these tubes at the meantime you can see that there's a there's an air flow which passes through this heat exchanger okay now when we try to discuss the air flow which is passing through the heat exchangers we have to identify this particular component as well so this is the ram air inlet so what is ram air ram air is the air flow which you get when the when you move forward so if you are traveling in a car if you put your hand out and you will feel the wind coming and hitting your hand right so that is the ram air so when the aircraft moves forward due to that forward motion air flow will come through this scope and just a quick side note this is by using this ram air inlet you can control the opening here thereby reducing or increasing the amount of ram air which is going through the heat exchangers based on the demand here the ram air inlet actuator is also controlled by its related air conditioning system control computer so when it comes to pack 1 the ram air inlet actuator of pack 1 is controlled by air conditioning system control computer 1 the ram air inlet actuator of pack number 2 is controlled by air conditioning system control computer 2 okay so we identified this part so back to our discussion of the heat exchanger so i told you that hot air goes through these tubes in the heat exchanger and the, at the same time the ram air flow comes here and it will pass through these tubes in doing so this now just focus on the color scheme now you can see that it's here you have bluish color and here you have red and orange what happens is the air flow the ram air which is cool air which comes from the outside and uh, comes here and when it passes through these tubes which is carrying bleed air which is at a very high temperature so somewhere around 100 degrees 150 degrees 200 degrees okay so now you have hot air passing through these tubes and you have cool air or cold air flowing over those tubes what happens is the temperature the heat heat transfers from hot place to the cold place so what happens is when the air passes through these tubes it gets hit by or the tubes get uh, hit by this cool air when that happens the hot air loses its heat energy to this cold air which is flowing over those tubes so it will not lose all the 
uh, the the full amount of heat energy here it, it will reduce to a certain extent so that's why it's orange here so it still has some temperature in it so I hope now uh, it's clear to you all so just a, a small summary you have hot air coming through these pipes the may same time you have cold air which is flowing over those tubes the what happens is the hot air will lose this heat energy to this cold air okay now this particular cold air which is at a slightly higher temperature now which passed over the tubes will go out from the aircraft via pack outlet so this is the air conditioning pack outlet and then and you can see that there is a small fan sort of a thing here so why why there is a fan and what is this uh, 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 what you call this uh, uh, different shape component so this is the plenum chamber so this is known as the plenum chamber and I'll, I'll explain you the uh, this part as well and here no we'll discuss it uh, when when we uh, come across this part okay for the time being just uh, identify now this is the plenum chamber so we had this primary heat exchanger here and we have the plenum chamber here and now here there's a fan why there's a fan so I told you that we have ram air coming from this ram air inlet so I told you that you will get ram air only when there is forward movement of the aircraft so if the aircraft is stationary you will not get this airflow right so how can we cool this bleed air during those times or when the aircraft is stationary for that reason here there is a fan which is coupled to turbine which will which we will discuss later so if the aircraft is on ground and if the aircraft is at low altitudes this particular fan will operate and it will suck air through this opening so even though aircraft is stationary the fan will operate because the pack is, uh, the air conditioning unit is operating and the fan will suck air from outside and it will uh, take the air through these exchanges and through the pack outlet it will discharge to the outside and what happens is with the increase in altitude the, the here there is some sort of a spring loaded uh, flapper type of a thing and uh, when the aircraft starts to move and the aircraft uh, gets airborne this will uh, progressively close off and uh, this fan even though it's operate it will not uh, suck air the airflow will mainly air f the, the when the aircraft moves and all that the airflow through the pack uh, heat exchangers will be mainly because of the ram effect right so we had this uh, what you call this thing uh, primary heat exchanger okay now the air after passing through the primary heat exchanger you can see that air comes here comes here and comes here and again it gets divided into two parts so one part will go this way the other part will go this way uh, a small correction that the fan is operated by uh, the it is coupled to the basically the ACM machine the even though it's mentioned uh, even though it's shown here that it's uh, connected here the entire assembly is operated by the turbine that's why I told you it's operated by the turbine basically it's coupled to the this part here uh, which, which you will uh, understand the next when I uh, explain you the next part so here now we are here airflow came here and gets divided into two parts and here there's a BYP valve so what is this BYP valve stands for bypass valve so bypass valve is here so airflow can come here and it can go 
two ways either it can go from through here or via the bypass valve so we'll discuss this as well so first we'll discuss the airflow which passes through this part this particular component is known as the air cycle machine so ACM it is the heart of the air, air conditioning system and from the basic knowledge of the systems so you know that when it comes to air conditioning system there are two systems one is a vapor cycle system and the other part one is the air cycle system so these modern aircrafts use air cycle system so why you use air cycle system it has many advantages so one is that uh, it doesn't have any fluid in the system so you don't need to have a separate reservoir thereby you reduce the maintenance and you reduce the weight so weight is the main concern when it comes to aircraft maintenance so you reduce weight by using the air cycle system and the air cycle system is much more efficient so the heart of the air cycle system is this air cycle machine so air cycle machine is nothing but a compressor and a turbine assembly so you have a turbine connected to a compressor when the turbine turns the compressor turns so we all know the function of the compressor it will compress and increase the temperature of the air like so here you have the compressor and here you have the turbine and this is the connecting shaft so we'll discuss this part first the, the main airflow through the uh, components first then uh, we'll discuss about the bypass valve so air came here here and it goes through the compressor when it passes through the compressor the pressure and the temperature increases okay after the compressor it comes here comes here comes here comes here comes here comes here and again it goes to a heat exchanger so here the 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 airflow which comes after the compressor goes through the heat exchanger e even though here it looks like the same unit but this is a different unit we call this part main heat exchanger so we had the primary heat exchanger here and now we have the main heat exchanger okay the principle is the same so after passing through the uh, uh, main heat exchanger airflow comes here comes here comes here and here it goes through a component called reheater so you will understand why it is called the reheater when we discuss the uh, at the end of the discussion okay so after just just follow the uh, color scheme and the arrows and after passing through the reheater the airflow will go through the condenser after the condenser it will go through this part which is known as the water extractor so the function of the water extractor is to remove any trapped water if present in the airflow which is coming from the condenser so the function of the condenser it uh, as the name itself what it does it it condenses the air so they are by cooling the airflow so then you can understand that there can be moisture introduced into the system because of this condensation process so the, if there are any moisture left at the water extractor this particular moisture or the water vapor will be taken out and the, the principle they use, use is the uh, centrifugal effect so what what is ba what what basically happens here is that the airflow will pass through a swivel sort of a arran arrangement then when the airflow passes through that arrangement due to the centrifugal force created by that air flowing through that special design the heavier water molecules will get uh, dispersed out and it will get collected 
in the water extractor and this collected water will be sprayed to the pack air inlet i told you that this is the pack air inlet and you can see that there are some a line goes through here and it, and you can see that it, it it gets sprayed so why you spray it is and and they this is this happens at uh, low altitudes okay on ground and low altitudes so what happens is when you spray cold air so the air you, the, the, the mo you have a moisture or the water vapor here and these uh, droplets are at much lower temperature than the air which is coming into the uh, ram air inlets so they collect this water and they it gets sprayed into the ram air inlet so thereby reducing the temperature of the incoming air flow into the heat exchangers so i hope that you understand that okay after passing through the water extractor it comes here and you can see that it goes through the reheater again and here there's a sensor which will which we will discuss later five it says water extract temperature sensor I'll, I'll explain you the function later on after we identify the components okay now it, it went through the reheater and after that it goes to the turbine right now why you call this component a reheater it reheater as the name implies it reheats the air which is coming to the system so you can see that air after passing through the main heat exchanger went through this component or the reheater here and the air after the condenser and after the water extractor passes through the reheater again right so this is also a sort of an heat exchanger what it does is now you have cold air coming after the water extractor which might contain some moisture in it so certain amount of moisture or the water vapor was uh, taken out at the water extractor and i told you that it gets sprayed into the ramia inlet and if by chance if you have some remaining moisture at the reheater because of this hot air flow which came from the uh, main heat exchange itself will heat this air and if any moisture is left in this air flow which is returning from uh, water extractor will get vaporized why you do that that is to protect the turbine if the moisture goes into the system or to the turbine it can cause corrosion so if the corrosion happens this can get seized and uh, it will lead for heavy uh, sort of a uh, heavy cost maintenance so to get rid of that moisture which will be introduced to the turbine side you reheat it get rid of the moisture if present and you introduce air to the turbine at the turbine normal physics air gets expanded and that energy is absorbed by turning the turbine here the, the temperature goes to very low value because now you had air coming air at a certain high temperature which is coming to the turbine and that heat energy which was in the air was used to turn the turbine energy conversation energy conversion so that air will lose lose its heat energy and that heat energy gets converted to a kinetic energy and that kinetic energy turns the turbine kinetic or in the other words kinetic energy is created due to the turning of the or the motion of the turbine and air will lose its heat and you will have sub zero temperature air which will come out from the turbine and you can see here after the turbine 
the air flow will go through the condenser again so that's why the hot air which was coming from the main heat exchanger got cooled so they use this very cold air which is coming from the turbine to cool the air which was returning from the main heat exchanger so after passing through the condenser the air flow comes here and here you can see a, a, a sensor which is known as a packed discharge temperature sensor and here 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 it came and through this check valve it goes to the mixture unit mixture unit part we'll discuss in the next lesson right now i think you uh, 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 just identified the components in the pack and uh, and here and, and and there's another small i missed this this is the pack discharge pressure sensor and here you have the compressor discharge temperature sensor okay now just we will will quickly summarize what we learned so far uh, quick thing the bypass valve so bypass valve is used in case if this particular component of the air cycle machine gets seized the bypass valve will open and it will supply air here so now you will not get the very low temperatures as you would if you have this acm running but still you have some sort of a air flow at a certain uh, bearable temperature which comes to the system so why you can't completely shut down this pack if this gets seized is that so will that part we will discuss in a later chapter so when it comes to pressurization so for the pressurization the air which is the, the pressurized the pressurization air comes from this air conditioning pack so here it says to mix a unit this air is used for pressurization of the aircraft so we can go with single pack operation in case if you have a failure if with uh, one pack and then you will have certain certain restrictions which so if you have one pack you will have to reduce the maximum height that the aircraft can fly so why in case in emergency you need to you should be able to descend very quickly because you have uh, uh, less amount of air in the so the the system and the next thing is when you fly at low altitudes because you have one pack you will have more fuel consumption so the you have fuel penalties so it's so basically we can go with one pack but uh, uh, it's good to have both packs right so back to bypass valve and when it comes to temperature regulation of the pack we normally identify the bypass valve as short term control uh, component and ram inlet as a long term control component so if you need to increase the pack temperature very quickly you can use the bypass valve if you if you want it in a long term process that means you need to maintain it for a long time and you know so you can use the ram air so and and there's another function and uh, will you will understand uh, it when we uh, complete the uh, complete this particular chapter and and here you have the panel the cockpit panel so if you have a look here and you will have a flow selector here and then you have three knobs here and one is for cockpit the other one is for forward cabin aft cabin and here you have uh, this is this is basically this is not related to air conditioning system uh, this uh, from here this part so you have the engine bleed engine one bleed apu bleed and uh, uh, engine two bleed and cross fee cross uh, fee cross bleed uh, well uh, and oh yes this this 
this uh, push button this push button this part and this part that we will discuss in the when it comes to chapter 36 so all the other items are included in chapter 21 and you have a ram air push button here and we will discuss about that when we discuss about the mix unit okay now here you have the hot air switch we will discuss it when it comes to the hot air system that hot air system is the trim air part which we will not discuss here okay now we'll uh, go through the system again and uh, we'll uh, fill the gaps in the system or the blanks which i did not tell you when we uh, went through the system earlier right we'll go through the system now okay now we have the bleed coming from the bleed system which can be apu engine or the hp ground card air yeah, goes through the ozone converter ozone converter it takes out ozone from the air and it comes to the flow control unit and here we call this flow control unit because it has uh, uh, several components integrated into it it has a torque motor it has two solenoid it has flow control valve it has a position sensor and it has two pressure sensors right so number one here we have the torque motor so what is the function of this and how this is operated so this torque motor is used to position the flow control valve based on the demand sensed by the air condition system controller okay the demand signal for the air condition system controller is from this cockpit panel so here you can see that pack flow selector here and based on its position the air conditioning system control computer will position the flow control valve to allow the required amount of bleed air into the pack side so when you move this switch it gives a signal to air conditioning system control computer it says here now i need this amount of flow into the system and based on this signal air conditioning system control computer one will position the torque motor right now you understood it and next i told you that it has two pressure sensors number one that is the pack inlet pressure sensor function of the pack inlet pressure sensor so pack inlet pressure sensor is the pressure sensor which sends the pressure of the incoming air flow into the pack in case if you have low air pressure here this sensor will signal it to the related computer that means now here we are talking about the pack one so it should be air conditioning system control computer one if we are talking about pack two it is air conditioning system control computer two right so he will send a signal to the in case he, he senses that the pressure here is less than the required amount pack inlet pressure sensor or the pips will send a signal to the air conditioning system control computer uh, indicating that now there is a low pressure here when this signal is received by air conditioning system control computer one so when he when he receives this signal first so he will move this bypass valve to more open position why you move this bypass valve to more open position is that so when you have low air coming into the system that low air will go through the compressor side and that will uh, uh, when 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 it goes through the system and all that it will the, the pressure here the, the, the there would be a, a high pressure the, the, the pressure created here so 
okay when the when this pressure sensor senses that the inlet pressure is less than the threshold value he will signal it to the air conditioning system control computer one so air conditioning system controller one that is for pack one when he receives that signal he will first he will open the bypass valve more so he will open the bypass valve more to uh, protect the air cycle machine here so if you have less pressure air going to the system the compressor will have to work very hard to give the required amount of pressure and uh, temperature to the air flow which is passing over it so he will have to work harder so to prevent that the bypass valve will open more and so it will bypass the air next the air conditioning system control computer one will check with the EIU that is engine interface unit whether this less amount of pressure at the pack inlet is due to the engine at idle condition if the engine is at idle you will have less amount of air flow coming to the uh, flow control valve inlet comparatively and air conditioning system control computer will ask the EIU to increase the idle thrust so you can have high pressure at the pack inlet so pack inlet pressure sensor will do since the uh, sense if there is a low inlet pressure and he, he will signal it to the air conditioning system control computer and the computer will do two things he will either open the bypass valve or he will talk to the engine interface unit computer and check whether the engines are at idle if so he will ask the EIU to increase the idle threshold so the pack inlet can have the required amount of air pressure here then there was another sensor which is known as the delta pressure sensor so it does two things so this sensor is the one which calculates the air flow through the flow control valve okay that is number one number two this the pressure sense here this this signal is used to give the ecam indication in the cockpit bleed page so the pressure signal here is converted to an electrical signal and it is sent to the air conditioning system control one and he will decode it and through the relevant SDACs or, or the computers and the DMCs it will be displayed on the cockpit okay next we have we talked about the motor and here is basically position sensor which detects the position on the of the uh, flow control valve and now we have two solenoids here I told you that one is a on off solenoid other one is the mode solenoid so when it comes to flow control valve the flow control valve will operate in two modes normal mode or pneumatic backup mode okay now one solenoid is an on off solenoid other solenoid is the one which is used for this normal operation and pneumatic backup operation okay when it comes to solenoid solenoid can have two stages energized or de-energized same story here on off will on off solenoid will have its on uh, on energized state and de-energized state normal and pneumatic backup solenoid will have its own energized state and de-energized state okay so this on off solenoid is controlled by 
this switch here when it comes to pack one the pack one flow control units on off solenoid is controlled by pack one push button in the cockpit so when you push it in the off legend will go off so this particular solenoid will get energized okay solenoid energized means the valve can open according to the demand which is calculated by related air condition system control computer the valve will be positioned via the torque motor right when you switch this off the on off solenoid will get de-energized right now on off solenoid it has two sta states energized and de-energized whenever this cockpit push button the related pack push button is pressed the on off solenoid gets energized thereby the flow control unit stock motor can position the flow control valve and I told you that flow control valve has two modes no normal mode and pneumatic backup mode so that part is controlled by the other solenoid and it also has two stages energized and de-energized if that uh, normal and pneumatic backup solenoid is in the energized state the flow control valve will operate in normal mode if it is in de-energized state the flow control valve will open in pneumatic backup mode so that is a different story right for normal operation of the flow control valve the on off solenoid should be in the energized state mode solenoid the other solenoid should be in the de-energized state even for flow control valve to operate in the pneumatic backup mode the on off solenoid should be in the energized state for operating no backup mode the pneumatic backup solenoid will go to the energized state if you switch this off from the cockpit the on off solenoid will get de-energized and the flow control valve will close so now you can see the flow control valve is an electrically controlled pneumatic valve why we call pneumatic valve is that it's normally spring loaded to close so even though the solenoids are energized it will not open unless you have air from the bleed system okay so that is the story of the flow control unit I think we discuss all the uh, sub components here next the airflow uh, went through the uh, okay now we'll go through again after flow control unit it comes here it went through the uh, primary heat exchanger we discuss what happens there the air to air heat exchange gets placed and the temperature is reduced of the uh, bleed dash which was uh, which came from the flow control unit after uh, primary heat exchange it went to the compressor and we discussed about the function of the compressor and it came here and here after the compressor here there is a sensor so we didn't discuss this sensor when we had the introduction why you have the sensor here so this is known as the compressor discharge temperature sensor so this is compressor discharge temperature sensor this does a very important function and you can see that it also sends its signals to the related side computer right for air condition system control air condition system controller one received signal from the pack one compressor discharge temperature sensor okay right so now I told you that here 
the compressor will increase the pressure and the temperature of the air which comes to the compressor side so after passing through the compressor the air the pressure and the temperature will be at a much higher value than the compressor inlet so this air comes and it will pass through this temperature sensor so now there are three states when it comes to the compressor discharge temperature sensor so we'll say now the air coming from the compressor is at 170 degrees to 180 degrees okay the, if the temperature of the air it coming from the compressor is less than or equal to 180 degrees the system will operate in normal condition okay now if the air coming after the compressor the temperature of the air increases or goes above 180 degrees now a, a small function will start to take place so what happens is the temperature if the temperature is between 180 to 220 degrees the signal will go to the air conditioning system control computer and he will reduce the amount of air coming into the system via the flow control valve using the torque motor why is that so now you can see our main function of this system is to get cool layer in an efficient manner so if the air coming after the compressor is at a very high value that means there are some issue somewhere so to reduce the amount of air available for the compressor to work with the computer will reduce the amount of air flow coming to the system now when you reduce the amount of air flow coming to the system the efficiency of the system will reduce so you will not have the uh, air at the required temperature to compensate for that the ram air inlet will open more so you will have more cooling air coming to the system to reduce that temperature right now we had two scenarios up to 180 degrees which is detected by the compressor discharge temperature sensor the system operates in normal manner from 180 to 220 degrees now the computer starts to close the flow control valve in a uh, what you call this thing uh, uh, in a um, modulated manner so in case if the temperature goes to 260 degrees and beyond the computer will have to take a take an action so what is that action so now up to 180 degrees normal operation 220 uh, air flow reduced using flow control valve when the temperature is 260 the air conditioning system control computer will close the flow control valve if the aircraft is on ground right only if the aircraft is on ground if the aircraft is in flight he will not close the flow control valve completely if the aircraft is on ground he will close the flow control valve completely when that happens here the pack push button you get the fault indication right so basically 
fault indication comes because of a position disagreement which is sensed by the position sensor here so push button is in the on position that means the solenoid is on off solenoid is energized now everything the, the, the push button in means valve should be open right now what happens is because of the 260 degrees here the computer has closed the flow control valve now the here it should be open but the actually it's closed so you have a position disagreement so here you get the fault light so this light will come even if the aircraft is on ground or in flight with the and 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 you will get a uh, uh, most of the times you will get a uh, uh, ECAM message as well it says pack overheat that means you have the air conditioning system which is running at a high temperature so now if we summarize it again up to 180 degrees normal operation everything is okay everyone is happy so up to 200 and when, you, when the temperature goes beyond 180 mm -hmm. uh, to 220 computer gets a little concern and he will start to reduce the airflow coming to the uh, system and at the same time to maintain the efficiency he will open the ram air inlet more so you have more ram air going through the system for cooling when the temperature is 260 the computer will close the flow control valve if the aircraft is on ground and it, you will get a forward light here with pack overheat message if the aircraft is in flight the flow control valve will not completely close but still you get the forward light here and you get the pack overheat uh, message as well right next the airflow went through the uh, main heat exchanger and i told you the function of the reheater then it went through the condenser then the water extractor that also i told you and here you can see uh, another sensor this is a temperature sensor it says water extractor temperature sensor so the signal of from this temperature sensor is used to regulate the pack discharge temperature so based on the this temperature value the air conditioning system control computer will control its related valves or units to get the required temperature which is set by these selector knobs in the cockpit so you can see that you have three knobs here you have one for cockpit one for forward cabin and one for aft cabin this is because so if you can remember in the first lesson i told you that the air flow is distributed into mainly three zones to control the temperatures or the set the temperatures in these three zones from the cockpit you have these selector knobs so the here you have the cold and hot and this would be 18 degrees celsius and it goes in 6 degree increments so 18 24 30 30 like so and so forth right okay now based on this temperature value the air conditioning system control computer will regulate the pack temperature after that airflow came in here the reheater through the turbine and here 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 it goes here uh, through the condenser and here there's another term it says pack discharge temperature sensor so pack discharge temperature sensor is the sensor which gives the temperature that the gives the uh, amount of temperature which is at the pack outlet so this signal is used to give the indication on the ecam the pack outlet temperature so it it will be on the condition page so you get the uh, uh, reading or the or the value in the condition page based on the temperature sensed by this pack discharge temperature sensor and if you have a look here and you have a small line coming here which is connected to another sensor a pressure sensor which is pack discharge pressure sensor and you can see that it has an inlet from this side as well it's sort of a differential 
pressure sensor so here the inlet from this side you will get cabin air pressure here and here you will have the pressure of the air coming out of the turbine right the sensor here he will sense the pressure of pressure at this place so what it does is in case I told you that the turbine will the turbine outlet at the turbine outlet the air flow will be at sub zero temperatures due to the heat energy conversation process so here it's prone to ice formation in case ice is formed here so you will not have a efficient system right so in case the ice forms here and the this pressure sensor will sense a pressure value which is so so he, he, he will sense a, a certain pressure here if the IC is formed and it will get compared to a threshold value which is uh, uh, programmed by the uh, manufacturer itself and and when he senses that pressure and he will identify that this is because of the ice buildup so you need to get rid of this ice and the computer will open the bypass valve more so thereby injecting some high temperature or, 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 or air here to melt away the ice so to summarize this pressure sensor will sense the pressure here and he will signal the air con system control computer and the computer will see whether the ice has formed here based on the signal which is sent by the pressure sensor here and he will compare it and identify now in case the ice has formed so he will identify it the, the whether the ice has formed with the with, when when with comparing to the uh, uh, threshold values and if so if ice is formed the bypass valve will open and you will have hot air coming here and it will melt away the ice so and here you have a check valve before the air goes into the mixer unit so what this check valve does is it prevents the air in the mixer unit side coming to the pack side so why is that in case the pack one is not operating the mixer unit will still have air coming from pack two so it will be at a certain pressure and if this check valve is not here that air from the mixer unit can leak through here and it will can come here to the pack one side to get rid of that you have a check valve here so it will allow air flow to flow in only in one direction which is toward the mixture unit right so basically this is the uh, discussion of pack components and even though it's a, a very long discussion that I hope that you understand or you understood the, the basic functions and the operation of the system next time we'll discuss about the mixture unit and finally we'll summarize all three lessons and then you will be thorough with the entire chapter 21 or the uh, air conditioning system of the A320 aircraft so 
next time we'll discuss about the mixer unit side and uh, we'll try to discuss the trim air system during that lesson as well or we'll discuss the trim air system next time and then we'll discuss the mixer unit so in that way it will be much more easier for you to understand so until next time fly safe stay safe